the exams for my part of the course. The second lecture will be writing the exam for his part of the course. Then there is a second examiner who checks that the level of the exam is correct and the exam has no mistakes. And then there is an external examiner who checks that we are teaching to the correct level and that we are examining in a consistent manner. And then there is a board of examiners that looks at the outcomes and says whether we are right or wrong. It's a very long and tedious process. So going back to this calculation, this exponential goes e into the distance, and this is why I'm seeing e to the i l and e to minus i l divided by the 2 plus 2 beta minus gamma. Okay. Now the complex exponentials translate straight away into cosine functions, cos k plus beta cos l multiplied by 2 divided by 2 plus 2 beta minus gamma. And now uh, k and l values could be anything. So we need to look at the extreme values of the cosine uh, k and cosine l, extreme positive and extreme negative, to try and estimate the lambda. Because for conversions, I want lambda to be less than 1. Or perhaps if I'm allowing kind of oscillations at one particular pair of the values k and l without actually decaying to zero, then lambda would be equal to one, which is admissible at one point. Uh, it, it does not harm the overall trend in the solution. Now, evaluating this combination, I think it's quite straightforward because the largest value I can pick up here is when both cosines are equal to 1, so it will be less than or equal to 2, 1 plus beta. The lowest value is 2, 1 plus beta minus gamma. And uh, the smallest value will be achieved when both cosines are equal to minus 1, so lambda is bounded by minus. Minus gamma. What we see, if I have gamma equal to zero, that I'm, I'm, I'm solving the ordinary Laplace equation, and then both sides are equal to one in magnitude, so lambda is definitely between minus one and one, and we have conversion. So this method, which was invented for Laplace's equation, it does converge. Now, what is the effect of gamma? Uh, if gamma is negative, then the numerator is always less than the denominator. Correct? So mod lambda is definitely less than Again, I have conversion. What happens when gamma is positive? Well, first of all, let's recall what gamma was. Gamma was A times delta X squared. In practical calculations, of course, you will want delta X to be very small. Otherwise, your finite difference scheme is not approximating the differential equation.